Welcome to the Business and Bubbly podcast. This is the place for women in business who are on the journey of building their big ideas and want to have fun along the way. It's for those of us who also know we aren't meant to do business or life alone. Hi, I'm Charity Majors, your host and the founder of Business and Bubbly. Think of this kind of like the, can I pick your brain chats that you always wanted to have with those who are doing epic things, plus business besties, hype girls, and getting into massive action towards your next big idea, all the same place. Oh, and bubbles, because if you're not having fun along the way, you're not doing it right. Together, we'll unlock what it means to be seen, known, heard, and championed all along the ups and downs of entrepreneurship and being a woman in business building big dreams. Each week, I'll bring you a quick sip business tip as well as interviews from top experts that make you feel like you're getting bottle service for your business. We're having the raw and real conversations and chatting about all the things, the messy middle, the pivots, scaling, the good days and the bad days, because here we do real. It's where we can work hard, play hard, cry it out and dance it out all at the same time without being judged. This is the place where we are in the arena together and we are each other's biggest fans because most of us have enough comments from the cheap seats. It's where our too much is par for the course and where the gaps of our not enough are filled in by the other epic women that are around us. It's where we can be unapologetic about the mission we are on, about the big dreams on our heart and the business we are building without having to be perfect or have it all together or even pretend to. It's a supportive community where business is being done amongst like-minded women because when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. It's a place where you have the support around you to get out of your comfort zone and go after your big ideas because even when you fail forward or when you reach the top, you know it won't be alone. Also, if you know anything about me, you'll know that I'm obsessed with creating platforms that lift up other women to be seen and heard and known. So with that in mind, I'd like to invite you to list your business on our directory called Find Women in Business. All you've got to do is text the word directory to 833-231-8098 and I'll text you the link back to get your free listing. This is also a great way to connect with other women in business from around the world, so definitely check it out. And now let's get to the good stuff. Grab a glass of your favorite beverage, Prosecco, bubbly water, or whatever your flavor is and let's dive in. Are you with me? Here we go. Welcome to the show. As always, we love, love, love having you guys here on the Business and Bubbly podcast. And today's guest, I'm really excited to have her here. These, this is one of our not only our one of our women to know, but she is one of our incredible chapter directors. Her name is Noelle Custis. She is our chapter director in Coachella Valley. So Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Coachella Valley area, uh, which is so, so fun. I'll, I'm going to share her bio and a little bit about her background. But Noelle, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to have this conversation and to just really highlight you as a leader, um, as a woman in business, as a, a community builder, and just your heart for women and what you're doing. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. I can't wait to have this chat today. Oh, same here. Same here. Um, So Noelle, her background, she's a wife and a mama of two, which is the biggest joy of her life. She's actually a former teacher of over 24 years. She took an early retirement and took a leap of faith to follow her heart. She's now the founder and heartbeat behind Rise to Shine Co., 
She is passionate about helping aspiring women shine from the inside out as a certified transformational coach and a jewelry stylist. She guides women through her signature programs to define their spark and empower them to walk in purpose and true joy. It fills her cup and she believes that building community, that networking and rising with other women is one of the most important things that we can do. She believes that we all have a gift to offer the world. So why not tap into that and make a difference together? She has one life to live. We all have one life to live. So let's live it to the fullest. Hashtag no regrets. I love that so much. So Noelle, thanks so much again for being here. And with all of the fun, fancy, amazing things that you're doing, I'd actually love for you to just kind of rewind in your story a little bit. And just kind of share maybe the the backstory of what got you to where you are today. Mm. You know, it's it's always such an interesting space when you get to go back and you get to reflect on where you have come from. Um, as you mentioned, I am married with two kiddos, uh, but you know, life is very different for me now than what it was several years ago. Um, I grew up in a home, my father passed away when I was eight years old. And so my mom was it for my brother and I. Luckily, we had a wonderful family that was definitely our community. But, um, you know, I watched my mom raise us as a single parent. And I, before he had passed away, uh, she had never really worked. She was a stay at home mom and she, you know, got married and had kiddos. So here she was in a space and, uh, you know, I didn't even know at the time I was eight. So I didn't know what it was like to be her. And I feel like watching her and being able to reflect back on that, I go, wow, what an amazing woman she was. Yeah. She worked hard. She went to school. Um, she was involved with all of our activities and sports. Um, and I just feel so blessed by that. And I really feel like that's what ingrained this really solid belief in the power of what women can do and what we can do in our lives uh, with the unexpected. And fast forward, I ended up getting married at a young, I went to college. I was the first person in my family to complete a degree and I put myself through college. So I've always felt like I had this drive to uh, accomplish things and I always wanted to be a teacher. So I knew I had to go to college. There was no choice in that matter, <laughs> but it was definitely one of those experiences that, you know, I worked hard to pay for that. And I ended up getting married at a young age and through that marriage there, you know, where it really gets personal is um, that marriage was almost 20 years. We had two, our two children. And uh, in between that, we had two miscarriages. So I kind of experienced like this loss, this grief. I was a teacher at the time. But what people didn't know is that behind the scenes, there was a lot of heavy stuff going on. And uh, it was definitely a space that there was, you know, they always say behind closed doors, you don't know, because you can put on this shiny, beautiful face and, and uh, smile and be in a place where everybody thinks everything is fine. And it was not fine. It was certainly a very challenging relationship. And so that ended up just again, through that experience, I was a worker bee. I stayed busy. I I was that woman that was just, I feel like I kind of wore that mask of being in a place of busyness that I, I was able to kind of push that hard step aside. And so again, fast forward, this is kind of like my story in a nutshell. I ended up we ended up separating after 20 years and 
I was on my own and I was now thinking, wow, I am in the position that my mom was in and we are, I'm here as a single mom and it was scary. It was scary and I was craving relationships with women. I was craving just having that community of women that I could be myself and I could be vulnerable and I could talk about the hardships and I didn't have to wear that mask anymore. So I ended up doing a lot of work uh, on myself, really diving into how can I be a better mom, all of those things that we are faced with. And I was just turning 40. So it was certainly a transition in my life and it brought me to where I am today. And now I am happily remarried to an amazing man that is so supportive. We have our two kiddos, um, or my two kiddos that have become ours. And we are in a totally different place to where I feel like because I did that work, because I have the experiences that I had, it's brought me to this place of having this beautiful feeling of being with women and really supporting women because I did go through so many different journeys as I was jumping in. So the pandemic is what woke me up to that. I will say that was kind of like my awakening when I was actually out of that busyness that I was talking about before. And I had the opportunity to really sit and think about the rest of my life. I thought, what is it that I want to do to better serve? And my heart just kept going to doing more with women. And here I was an elementary school teacher, which I loved. And I loved being with kiddos. But there was just this I, I feel like God was just putting in front of me so many things that I was supposed to veer into a different direction. And the moment came when my husband, we were out on the patio having coffee one morning, and my husband, after many tears, being confused about what direction I was going to go in next, said, I think it's time for you to take an early retirement. And I had never considered that before, ever in my life had I considered that. And through lots of conversation, lots of reflection, I ended up taking that leap of faith. And here we are. <laughs> so, so good. Oh my gosh. And what an example. And I actually love your perspective of growing up with a single mom. And as hard as that can be, like, I can't pretend to know what it's like, what it's like by any means. I, my husband is a firefighter, so he's yeah. at the fire station for 48 hours every four days. So I kind of get like a couple days of like the single mom life and like single moms are like my heroes because I like after 48 hours of like my kids and like being in charge of everything and every bedtime and every whatever, like every meal and every diaper change and all of that stuff. I'm like, Hi, hey, okay. I need like, someone else. So, like, first of all, the fact that like the view that you have of not only seeing like, wow, women are amazing and we can do anything. Mm -hmm. And to be able to take that perspective then throughout your journey when that would then became a part of your story. Wow. Like mm -hmm. just wow. I love that so much. Um, so share a little bit about, obviously you're passionate about working with women. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like in what you do with Rise to Shine Co and what you're passionate about, even why diving in with Business and Bubbly as a chapter director and a community builder. Like, let's let's kind of dive into that because it's very apparent that you are absolutely meant to equip and empower and draw out the best. I like to call like, and I'm one of this, um, one of this, what I like to call like a gold digger, like a gold miner. Mm -hmm. And it's that you can see the gold, the worth 
in other people, like despite the junk, right? Like when you think about gold mining, like you got to kind of dig through the junk sometimes to pull mm, out this gold nugget of worth. And I can just see you doing that, not only obviously working with jewelry, but how you work with women and draw out their purpose and um, help them discover and find what they're called for and their worth and how to shine on the inside and out. So yeah, it just is very apparent that you are absolutely um, walking in what it is that you are made for. So it's, it's really fun to see, but I'd love to hear a little bit of, of what got you to that point, mm-hmm. and even owning that part of you. Yeah. You know, uh, I go back to when I was a mom for the first time I had my daughter, I was in my late twenties and I remember that was when I really noticed how important community was. And like you said, you know, just raising little ones and especially an infant for the first time, it's like, what do I do? And I remember during my maternity leave, I would love to go to any mommy's group I could possibly get my hands on because it was like, Number one, it was a relief because I felt like I'm not the only one. I'm not alone in this journey. And it was hard sometimes. And it was hard to admit that it was hard, you know, and we want to be these great moms and we want to make it look like we've got this. It's so it's easy, Uh, but it wasn't. And so I remember I had eight weeks. That was it of being with my kiddo before I had to go back to work. And I did. I just craved those times. And I was so sad when I went back to work because so many of those mommies groups met in the morning or the daytime. And I was searching and I was looking for what is there that's available. And at that time, you know, virtual being on Zooms, that wasn't even a thing. And so I just remember feeling like this huge gap. And I remember back then even kind of daydreaming about how can I create a group, you know, that we could do this for working moms that are still going through the same struggles, you know, and um, I, unfortunately that never came to fruition, but it was always a calling for me. I remember always kind of, you know, just that, that looking into it and imagining that. So as the years go by, you know, time goes by fast when we have these little ones and they're growing up and it never left. It really was just always on my heart that I felt like there was such a need for that collaboration and community was so becoming so much more evident to me. I mean, as a teacher, we collaborated. And uh, that was, I think what happened is when we, again, you know, the pandemic was, it, it was a horrible thing for all of us to go through. It was really, really hard. But on the when I look at it from a different lens, I go, it was also in a very interesting way, it was a blessing in my life because it helped me to sit with some things and be able to focus and really think about what it is that lights me up, what it what it is that I can really pay attention to without looking at the, you know, I had built a great career in teaching, but putting all of that aside and going, what is it that is still on my heart and is still resonating with me in such a big way? And it always came back to a community of women. Mm -hmm. And that was where Rise to Shine Co. was birthed. It really was. um, I, and I kept hearing, and you know, it's, I always say it's like God's winks, you know, when you're trying to figure things out and you're in a space that you're questioning things and I would go and I would do my quiet time and I kept hearing rise to shine, rise to shine. And I was like, what in the world does this mean? And, you know, months later, I realized it means that this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help women rise to shine because I believe so passionately in, like you said, women can do so many things. And I just feel like it's so important that we know that we're not alone in that and that our dreams are something that can come to fruition. You don't have to just sit back and think about it. 
let's start learning how we can take action because I just feel like we we do get this one life and time I, I've watched my grandma is 91 years old and I've watched her go through her lifetime and you know I've seen how beautiful she's lived out her life and I think just because I'm going to be turning 50 doesn't mean that I want to sit back and sit in my rocking chair yet. I am so just full of life. And I feel like no matter what age you are as a woman, we have those dreams. We have things that are calling us for more. And I love just tapping into that for women. So oh, good. So what do you do with Rise to Shine when you work with women? What does that look like? Because I have no doubt that there's someone that's listening, even if it's just one woman who you are like, man, I know that I'm, I'm meant for more. I know I'm called for more. I know that I'm meant to shine. But how do I unpack that? Like it feels like like that little gold nugget is really, really small and there's a lot of junk on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So true. So true. And I did. I, you know, I had a lot of junk. There was a lot of junk that we had to sift through. And I think when we, when I'm really working with women, it's really getting back to their values, their core values. What is it that really drives you? And I didn't even really know what that meant. When I heard somebody ask me, what are your values? I was just thinking like ethically, where am I at in life? And it's so much bigger than that. It is so much bigger. And so we really dive into what are those core values and what's your why? What is what does life look like? What does your ideal life look like? Because when you start to unpack that, things start to reveal themselves and you start to see not only what you're good at, not only what your hobbies are, but you start to notice the little things that become kind of that calling that you go, oh, I have never put all of that together to really see what my gifts are or how I can use my gifts differently. I feel like in our society, we're very used to kind of being in a box. And I feel like we're taught, you know, in school, it, there's just, you know, it's kind of like a method that we're, we're taught a certain way. Like I knew I wanted to be a teacher. So therefore this was the path that I had to take. And it wasn't until I started to realize that even though teaching is a gift for me, I didn't have to teach in a classroom. I didn't have to teach within those four walls, that there's other opportunities out there for me. So when we dig into those values and what drives you in your life, and you're constantly going back to those top three values, it helps you to move forward and stay focused. And then going to your why, as far as like that really deep why, um, why and what your purpose is, then we start to reveal all of the things. And that is when I feel like women gain their confidence. They start to see things from a different lens. And then that's my job is to help you kind of work through that. Because I do believe that, you know, we have this inner wisdom that can lead us to a place bigger than what we even imagine. And I, you know, being a woman of faith, I also believe that those are planted there for a reason. It's not by accident and that it is certainly something that, you know, we can explore. So whether it be career or even just, you know, even just what it looks like to serve, you know, maybe serving is your passion and that's your why. So, you know, it varies for everyone, but it really comes down to, to those three things. So good. So what were some of the things that you like some of the dirt, some of the junk that you had to work through um, to get to this point? Yeah, you know, I think for me, the biggest one, um, being that I was in my mid 40s, and I was kind of later in my career, for me personally, it was really about the confidence to leave the identity that I always thought I was. I, mm. everyone knew me as the teacher and everyone was so, you know, my family was so proud of me for being a teacher. And uh, it was, it was kind of just like what was expected of me. And I thought, how do I leave this space 
because people thought I was crazy. I mean, let's, we will not pretend here. I mean, when I said I was going to take an early <laughs> retirement, my family, you know, as supportive as they are, there were a lot of hard conversations in that. And it really had to do with them just trusting what I was going to be stepping into. But I think the confidence was certainly something and fear. Oh my gosh, so much fear. So I really, when I took the early retirement, I really didn't know what it looked like. At the time, I had just started this fun little jewelry business and I was enjoying being on because of course we were not in person at that point. So I was enjoying in 2020 being with women on Zooms and just laughing and encouraging and just seeing smiles because I hadn't really been seeing that out in society much and in my community. So it was a beautiful thing that just ended up evolving into more. Uh, but I just think it was just that really, you know, getting past a lot of fears gaining that confidence, and then also doing the work. I had to, I could think all the things, but until I started taking actions on working on some like inner inner stuff that I needed to get through to get past some of those fears and to get, gain that confidence, not be afraid of the judgment, because that is, that is huge. I didn't realize how big that was going to show up in my life. So I think those were the biggies for me. No, that's so huge for sure. So if they, and I'll just speak to the, like what you're saying about even the being afraid of judgment and the women that if you're called to shine, you're called to like be a voice, you're called to like lead from the front of the room. You're called to like, if you're a woman in business, like you're dealing with people, like you got this dream on your heart, this side hustle, this passion project, this thing that you're doing, you're going to deal with judgment, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> like not, it's like every time I know for me, it's like every time I'm being called to the next level and you start to step into it, all of a sudden, like the critics come out and the judgment, yes. and whatever, <laughs> the little chatter and the gossip. And it's, and it's like, I know it's coming. And every time, mm -hmm. like, it's stupid. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> And it's so powerful, you know, it, it really, I mean, even to this day, I have to, I have to go back to my tools of my affirmations and my quiet time and my routines to, you know, really remain in that confidence, but also with great humility and to know that this is not this is not me, you know, as a leader, I feel like it is our jobs. It is what we do is to help others shine and to help other women live out their purpose. Because I just imagine a world of imagining a world of women living out their purpose and just really being in a space where they step into her. I love to say, I know that's kind of a thing, you know, we own it and we step into her for her in my world, it's definitely about being happy, empowered, and then also being renewed and feeling like no matter what age you are, you are able to be renewed and you can step into that. And yes, there's going to be the gossip. Yes, there's going to be, you know, I realize that people start to talk about you because it's unfamiliar to them, number one. And number two, I, I learned from women that like former teachers, my coworkers that I was really good friends with, they wanted to actually protect me. You know, I saw it as judgment, but there was also the, we're nervous for you. We don't know what you're stepping into. And we know what you have here feels solid. It's a solid retirement. It's a salt, you know, this is, this is the life we're all living and we've all worked so hard for. I think there was a little bit of protection too. So when I kind of shifted that mindset and really started having those conversations, especially with the women that were near and dear to my heart that I felt like were a little uh, apprehensive about me doing this, that was when the vulnerability came out and we were able to have those really great conversations. Oh, I love that so much. So it's sticking even with the theme of judgment. Yeah. I know that a lot of women can feel like they get scared to 
walk into a new room full of women that they don't know and right so now let's shift kind of into this community builder community leader chapter director type of a thing what does it look like for you to now create this environment where actually like right it's not the like no new girl vibes like there's not judgment when you walk in like we um you get to show up as your favorite self like we talked about i know you just shared mm-hmm. about that at your last sip and social and networking event um that you just had but what does it look like knowing that that's a thing and knowing it's a very real thing and a very real fear that a lot of us women have mm-hmm. what does it look like in your community um as I love- a kind of a judgment free zone <laughs> Right. And I think that is exactly what, when I initially was introduced to business and bubbly, that was the piece that I thought, this is what I love. We're creating a culture where women can walk through those doors and you are immediately embraced. And instead of walking into the doors, because I can't tell you how many times I have walked into a room and believe it or not, I am really an introvert at heart. I always say I'm an extrovert when I get to know you. And I feel like I can just, you know, tell you my whole life story, but walking into a room of strangers, I become very shy and I am very intimidated. And it's, it is, it's a scary thing for me. So that's one of the reasons why I never really loved going to networking groups, uh, because I thought, oh gosh, here we go, you know? And so this, what is so beautiful about it is we have women that are welcoming you right from the moment that you walk through the door. You're not walking in, floundering around and wondering, where do I go? What do I do? You've got, even before you walk through those doors, I feel like there's already a connection when someone is saying, hey, you know, I'm going to be a guest. I, you know, I'm excited about coming. I'm a little nervous. I mean, there's already those conversations starting much of the time. And then the women, when they do walk in those doors, you know, we're making sure that's the culture of business and bubbly is that there are people there that are already welcoming you with open arms, no matter who you are, what business you come from. Like, it doesn't matter because we believe that all women have such value. And we, that's our mission is we want you to be seen. We want you to be heard. And I love that. And so we, you walk into our business and bubbly, you're welcomed. And then not only that, but there are women that want to introduce you to other women. You're not walking it alone. You don't have to be the person that is being the extrovert and forcing yourself. Uh, it, you know, People are there to help guide you and help you to be comfortable. There are some women that naturally walk into a room and they know how to do their thing, but there's other women women that this may be their first time. This you know, may not be comfortable for them. And I just love that because we have so many things in place where from the beginning of the meeting all the way until the end of our sip and socials, there are interactive activities that we do. It's not about the basic chit chat. It really is about, we want to get to know you on a deeper level. We want to, you know, we want to explore what it is that you have to offer and who you're about, why you're here. And that is what I truly, truly love about business and bubbly and the culture we create. Oh, so good. And I couldn't agree more. What was, because you just recently started as a chapter director and you just had your first, at the time of this recording, you just had your first networking event, Sip and Social. And I remember watching your Instagram stories and you were like on this like cloud nine and just your heart for the women your heart for community it is so evident you want to just share a little bit about what your experience was after that first event I I literally as you're talking I'm getting chills because I just I feel like it's going to be embedded in my brain forever as one of those moments that changed me because I got to see what I had been dreaming of for so long, thinking about how am I going to put together a group of women? What is that going to look like? And here I was, and I was like, I remember, (laughs) this is kind of a funny story. My son was coming with me to help set up 
with some of the other ladies, but it was just my son and I in the car. And my son said he's 14 years old and he's my hype guy. He is my guy that is always like, come on, mom, you can do it. Let's, let's listen to some music to hype us up. And I remember he put on a song and we were singing and I just kept yelling out to in the car with him. And I know the story will just make us laugh forever. <laughs> I just kept saying, you are brave. You can do this. Cause I have to hype myself up because I was so <laughs> nervous and I just thought okay you're brave you're brave and my son's kind of looking at me like I had maybe gone off the deep end at that point but I was singing at the top of my lungs because I do believe in that energy and that vibration I was like we're gonna lead from the front and we're just going to just embrace these women what whoever shows up is exactly who is meant to be there today and I walked in it was more than what I could have ever even imagined just the the setup the location that we had it was just it was beautiful it was it just was friendly the women that were coming in I think honestly were in awe I mean everyone was like oh my gosh I, because it's not what you expect from the traditional right and so it was it was all of these things combined and I did I we, I had this whole plan on exactly what I was going to do. I had it all timed out. Everything was all there. And we didn't get through half of it because <laughs> it was so much connecting. And the women were so just so appreciative that they were seen and they were heard and people were hugging each other. And it was, it was just a beautiful evening. But what came afterwards is what has become more beautiful that the next day, I have to tell you, I had a whole list of to-dos and I sat and spent my entire day connecting back with the women because they, I was get my phone was blowing up just saying, oh my gosh, this was amazing. How do I get my friend in this? This, you know, so I was spending a lot of time responding to those messages, but I almost felt like I had this like emotional hangover <laughs> because it was so, it was just such a beautiful time and just the energy that was in that room I was like exhausted the next day but <laughs> what I've seen evolve it's like I smile every single day we have some women that are shouting each other out on their social media pages they're visiting their businesses and they're hyping them up already and I'm like this was just the first meeting how cool is this that oh, we sure. they've made these connections already so that has been really really special really special Oh, I love that so much. Well, I know even just hearing what you're talking about and what you're creating in the culture of business and bubbly and how you're really bringing it to your area. I have no doubt that local women in your area and the Coachella Valley are going to want to hear how to get involved. And then women now on a global scale on the podcast, they're going to want to know how they can plug into you and rise to shine. Um, so go ahead and share where they can find you, follow you, dive into your world, get involved. Involved, and then do a little like maybe there's a woman out there maybe similar to you where she has a desire to create and cultivate community mm. and I know for us as chapter directors I'm a chapter director as well it's like okay but I don't want to do it alone I don't want to start from scratch how do we get support along the way like I don't want to fumble through this whole thing I already got another thing going type of a mentality what would you say to those women women who like you you heard about business and bubbly Shelly introduced it to you and you dove in as a leader as a community as a as a chapter director, what would you say to that woman who knows she's called to lead from the front of the room and to create and cultivate community with women? What would you say to her? Well, what I would say to that is absolutely, I completely believe in you and I absolutely want you to believe in yourself. Listen to that calling because it is there for a reason and you do have a purpose. And the wonderful thing about business and bubbly in particular is that you are not meant to do this alone. And that is what is so wonderful is that you are going to get that support. You are this is not something that is meant to be your 
entire life. So if you've got other things going on, that's okay. This is going to be a part of that, that can come to fruition for you. And I just truly believe that if you have that on your heart, act on it because don't live in regret. Don't live in regret. Don't don't look back two years from now and go, if only, or what if I listened to that? I would just encourage you to just be in a space of being open-minded and knowing that you are fully capable, you will have all of the support and that you will be loved on through this process. So uh, I just think it could be such an exciting, an exciting adventure for you that Rather than looking back with regret, you're going to look back and say, I am so grateful that I had this opportunity, that I listened to my inner wisdom and I was like, let's do this because it is life changing. It My life is so different now than what it was even just six months ago. I, I, I am, if you ask the people that knew me six months ago, People are now saying, oh my gosh, you're shining. You're, you know, when we serve others, when we, when we get into that and step into leadership, there's something about that, that expands our hearts. And I do believe that that is when we really start to shine. And so that's what I would encourage anybody out there. So good. So good. And I just love it. Noelle, it's so evident that you're meant for it. And I love that we get to be on this journey together. Where can people find you, follow you, dive into your world, be your type girl. Like we're on your, (laughs) we're some of your biggest fans and are cheering you on along the way as you build community. So where can people find you and follow you? Absolutely. So of course you can find me at, uh, on Instagram. I, I'm pretty much living on there these days. I love it. It's so much fun. It's where I get to build relationships and, you know, people kind of give social media sometimes a bad rap, but I'll tell you what, when you are following people or women that inspire you, that you are growing from, it is such a magical place. And so please follow at CV business and bubbly on Instagram, or you can also find me at joyful uh, underscore Noel that those are my two Instagram accounts. I'm also on Facebook rise to shine co. So you can find me there as well. And, uh, yeah, I love, I love being in my DMS. I love reaching out. My favorite thing is voice messages. So don't, don't be scared. If I leave a voice message, I just <laughs> love to be able to just pour into women and just get to know more women. Cause it really is. It really is special. So good. Well, I love this so much. Noelle, thank you so much for being here. You guys, you ladies or the listeners can for sure see why she is not only a woman to know, but one of our leaders. And if you're interested in being a leader, check out, head over just to businessandbubbly.com. You'll see the button that says like learning more about being a chapter director. But if you are a like-minded woman like Noelle, we would love to have you learn about leading a community in your area. If you are wanting to unlock your purpose and discover the worth and the goal, in you to shine, reach out to Noelle. And if you are in the Coachella Valley area, go dive in and get involved in her community. She's doing amazing, amazing things. Noelle, thanks for being here. And as always, to the ladies listening, cheers to your success. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I hope it brought some value and some fun into your business and life. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast and even share the episode with a fellow business bestie who you know will love it. It helps us continue to attract top-level guests and reach more and more women who are on their journey in business just like you. Remember that when money gets in the hands of good women, great things happen. Cheers to your success.